Hey, what's up guys? Sham here on Minute ML and today we're going to attack a binary classification problem. We're going to build a machine learning model that will be able to classify movie reviews as positive or negative. Let me give you a background on the data set. We have about 50,000 reviews from the Internet Movie Database with 25,000 training data and 25,000 testing data, each containing 50% positive and 50% negative reviews. I'm going to kickstart the virtual environment and this time around let's build the machine learning model in Jupyter Notebook. Well, that's something exciting. Similar to MNIST data, the IMDB movie review data set comes packaged in Keras. So once again, we don't have to worry about building the data set. We load the training and the testing data along with the corresponding labels. We will set the number of words as 10,000. This means only the top 10,000 frequently occurring words will be considered and rest all will be discarded. Let's take a look at what one review looks like. Whoa, that's not how people write reviews. Just kidding. All the words are converted to the corresponding index as per the frequency of occurrence. Let's decode the review. And by the way, here's the corresponding label for the review, which means positive. We get the word index for all the words, which looks something like this. Then we reverse the mapping. After that, we iterate through each value in one training example and get the corresponding word for the index value. As you can observe, we have an offset of 3 since 0, 1 and 2 are reserved indices for padding, start of the sequence and unknown. Here's how the decoded review looks like for one training data. In fact, it's a positive review. You cannot just pass a list of numbers into the neural network. You have to turn your list into tensors. One way to achieve that is one hot vector encoding. In the previous video where we did a multi-class classification on the handwritten digits, we used two categorical method to achieve this. In this case, let's write a small utility function that converts the input into the one hot vector format. The one hot vector encoding should have the first dimension equal to the number of examples in the training data. The second dimension should be equal to 10,000, where 10,000 corresponds to the top frequently occurring words. Here's what the training sample looks like after one hot vector encoding. Oops, there seems to be a syntax error. I think I just closed the parenthesis in the wrong place. Yeah, now it'll be fixed. So that's how the training data looks like after one hot vector encoding. Let's also vectorize the labels as well. Okay. Now comes the easy part where we need to build a network. Similar to the previous video, let's import models and layers and create a sequential model. Let's build a neural network with two hidden layers and 16 neurons each. Since this is a binary classification problem, we will have only one neuron or unit in the output layer with a sigmoid activation. What a sigmoid essentially does is it squashes the input that it gets into a range between 0 and 1, which essentially in this case becomes the probability that the review is a positive one. We set the loss function as binary cross entropy, unlike the previous video where we set it as categorical cross entropy when we dealt with MNIST dataset. This is because this is a binary classification problem and that one was a multi-class classification problem. Before we proceed to train the model, let's split the original training data into training data and validation data. Machine learning is a battle between optimization and generalization. Your model might fit extremely well on your training data, but that doesn't mean it can generalize well on previously unseen data. This is called overfitting. This is the case where the model has started to memorize the training data. 
The trained model must perform reasonably well on the validation set as well to make sure overfitting doesn't happen. We are creating a validation set by setting apart 10,000 samples from the original training data. Next, we train the model by calling the fit method. We pass the corresponding arguments. We set the epochs 20 and the batch size to 512. We also pass the validation data so that the metrics are also calculated for the validation data. Here, metrics meaning the accuracy and loss. The fit method returns the history object which has a member called history. It contains data about everything that happened during training in a dictionary data structure. I'm going to get the training and validation metrics and store in the corresponding variables so that I can use them to plot the accuracy and validation for training and testing data. Let's plot the training and validation loss side by side. For that, we need to import pyplot from matplotlib. On the x-axis, we will have the number of epochs and on the y-axis, we will have the loss. Similarly, let's also plot the training and validation accuracy side by side. As you can observe, the validation loss and accuracy seem to peak at the fourth epoch. This means we are over-optimizing on the training data and learning patterns that are specific to the training data. Let's go back a little bit and retrain our model with four epochs. As you can see, we have achieved 88% accuracy. But with state-of-the-art techniques, we can achieve up to 95% accuracy. Let's evaluate the model by running it on the test data. And there you go. You have built a binary classifier that classifies movie reviews as positive or negative. So what are the takeaways from this video? So you can change the number of layers in the network or can play around by changing the number of hidden units in each layer or try different activation functions like tan H or use a different loss function such as mean squared error instead of binary cross entropy. Building a great deep learning model is more of an art and with continuous experimentations and learning we can master the skill. Thanks for watching. Do like, comment and subscribe.